Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Tecla Scott here. And today in this video, I'm gonna be going over, in my opinion, the best picture settings to calibrate your LG UQ 75 inch TV, specifically the 43 inch model, although this could also apply to the larger models that they make this. I believe this goes up to actually a 75 inch TV, which is kind of crazy. Um, I wanna give credit to Artings uh, for, for these settings. I'll leave a link down in the description. Uh, our things, if you don't know, um, our websites that basically objectively not only rank technology um, and screens and, and computers, I'm sorry, uh, monitors as well as TVs in terms of like overall objective picture quality, but they also offer settings to calibrate every TV and monitor to make it look the best in their opinion, objectively, not subjectively. Um, some, object some subjectivity in there, um, they do leave it open to you. Um, the user a little bit, um, a couple, you know, a couple options in there. They'll say, oh, you can, you can leave it on this setting depending on what you want. But um, most of the time they'll just say, here, here are the settings that we think are the best for your specific TV, TV and here's how to calibrate each of those settings. So it's specific to every single TV. So the, the one that the, I have here is my LG UQ75 and I'll walk through sort of the, the main settings that I tweaked um, so I could get this image that you're seeing on screen here, which in my opinion uh, looks looks really crispy and it looks a lot better than what this thing looked like coming out of the box, which is which is uh, impressive in my opinion. Also, big shout out to Steezy slash Darian for sending me the link to this website um, so I could calibrate it. So um, there's gonna be two uh, sort of two ways I want to do this. So two different sections. The first I'm gonna do standard um, dynamic range, SDR, and then the second part will be HDR, although the HDR part won't be too long. So um, what you wanna do, and I'll just walk through the settings I have. You can also follow along on um, our team's website, but I'm basically just gonna be going over what I have. I didn't follow their guide like 100%. I, I tweaked some things, but um, let me show you what, what I have um, going on. So if I bring up, sorry about that. Um, for some reason, my default settings, the settings I adjusted, uh, were not showing up when I turned the TV on, but they popped up now. So anyway, um, I'm in all settings. If you go to picture, um, also by the way, uh, for sound select mode, if you guys care about sound, I just leave it on AI sound. I think that sounds the best. And that's what they thought as well. Um, but if you want to tweak it, you can. Um, but anyway, if you go over to picture, um, currently, the uh, setting that they suggested that they thought the best was this ISF Expert Dark Space Last Night because they said um, this one kind of creates the most, I don't know, non-adjusted image, like flat image that you can go into other settings and actually adjust yourself. So um, all these other settings like have tons of adjustments on top. This is the most like bare bones, which we can go in afterwards and adjust our own our own sort of settings. So that's why they recommended the ISF expert dark space slash night setting. So click on that. And then if you go to advanced, I'll show you what I'm working with um, for brightness. Leave panel brightness on 100, adjust contrast 80, black level 50, auto dynamic contrast, turn that off. And then they recommended gamma, adjust brightness, set it to 2.2. I think uh, by default, select that dark space um, default picture. You set to like BT 1886. You wanna switch it over to 2.2. Go back here. And you can turn this on, motion eye care. I just have it off. But those are the those are the brightness settings. And remember, I am on standard dynamic range. I'm not on HDR yet. When you actually play HDR content, you'll have HDR settings pop up. That's why you're not seeing it right here. But if you go to color, uh, set color depth to 50, tint to zero, Color gamut, um, I think, yeah, this is where I made an adjustment myself, but you guys, you can be the judge. This kind of has, this uh, kind of determines like if you want punchy colors, saturated colors or not. I do, I do like a little bit more punchy colors. I like the saturated look a little bit more. Um, if you don't like that, leave it on auto detect, but if you do want a little more, a little bit more punchy colors, uh, turn it on native. So that's what I did. So that's just an example of, you know, not following their guide exactly, but sticking to it probably like 80, 90%. Um, can also go to fine tune, although there isn't 
I don't think they actually recommended anything in fine tune now that I'm thinking about it. So don't, you don't have to go in there. Uh, they do adjust white balance a little bit. Um, color temperature, I leave it on warm 50 method, two points. Um, I have mine on high. I think by default it's low. Um, I think it's honestly up to you guys. I think I played around with this. They might have suggested low and I just turned it on high. Uh, I was watching some 4K content on YouTube and I think I determined I like the look of high better. So I just left it on high. Um, and then I wouldn't really touch any of the red grease settings. That's like ultra tweaking. I don't recommend people do that. So that's color. If you go back, let's go to clarity. They actually make a lot of adjustments in clarity. Um, adjust sharpness. They have this set to 20. I think by default it's on 10. So they're upping that. Super resolution. I think this is on either off or low by default and they, they bump it up to high. I do like that. I noticed when I made that that change specifically, I could see a lot more details in um, in the picture itself. Lot, uh, and I in the sharpness, it's not like over sharp to the point where it's I don't know, like just, it just looks artificial. Um, but it's a good level of sharpness where you can really bring out the details in certain images, especially with 4K content. I think it's awesome. Noise reduction, um, I have it off. I think they suggest that as well. MPEG noise reduction, I have that off. Smooth gradation. Um, I think I had this on by default and then, cause like based on the, like the actual description of this, it sounds like why not have this on? Enhance the edge of the image to make it smoother. Um, this feature is not available while connecting to a PC. So I was like, oh, of course, like why wouldn't you have that on? Um, and then I, and then I tested it and I, I turned it on and I was like, I do not like the look of that at all. So I turned it off. Um, and then true motion, I think they have this off. Although I am kind of a sucker for motion smoothness. So I have mine on natural, uh, you can turn it off, whatever, but, um, it, it, it's up to you. Actually, I think they, I think they left this up to the user. I think they went to user selection and then DJudder, you can like manually tweak it, like make really fine. You can really fine tune if you want to. I like natural, um, but it's honestly up to you guys. All right. Um, if we go back, um, all these settings, I think that's, that's basically it for picture settings for standard dynamic range. Um, so let's hop over and, and, and sound, like I said, just through an AI sound. I don't think there's much tweaking you actually have to do with sound quality. Um, let me switch over to an HDR video and I'll just show you the HDR setting. Okay, so we're back. Um, so I have an HDR video playing on YouTube. Um, it says HDR, but wh whatever. It's also 8K, which is kind of cool. Um, so HDR settings, this one shocked me a little bit. I thought they were just gonna like leave it on standard. They actually recommend cinema user settings. So with cinema, like most of the time, I don't like this, or it's also called movie mode in, in some other TVs. I don't usually like it because it really like, mutes the image and makes it really, really warm and orange. And I don't like the look of it, but I made a couple tweaks and they made a couple tweaks, which I think really make this look great. Um, basically it retains a lot of the details in, in HDR content. Like you, it re retains the, the clarity um, while also making it very smooth at the same time. It's hard to describe, but it's like very smooth. You don't have any like motion judder or anything like that. So it has that, those two things, and then also um, maintains really good contrast. I'll show you that setting in a sec. But yeah, so the default is cinema. So if we go back, we go to advanced settings. We'll adjust some of this stuff. Um, panel brightness 100, uh, adjust contrast 100, black level 50. These are, these are the settings. I can't remember which one it is. Um, I think it was this one, auto dynamic contrast. Once again, sounds great in theory, but then once I started like playing around with it, I noticed it just like, it was really messing with like the clarity of the image. Like when you leave this on high, I'm like, why am I losing details by turning this on? So eventually I'm like, I want that off and it fixed a lot of things. Um, and then same thing with dynamic tone mapping. Darkens the image a ton, as you can see. I mean, I know I have like the menu paused, but as you can see, like, Turning this on, it just, the image is too dark in my opinion. So I turned it off. I wanted a brighter, HDR should be bright. And then a lot of these settings don't matter because you can't even adjust them. Color, 
color depth 50, tint zero, color gamut. Uh, they recommended auto detect. I think that's fine. So the native chip, but now I'm curious to tell the difference there. Uh, fine tune, as I mentioned, that's not really important. And then white, they did, they, oh, so, so this is the difference, sorry, I messed up. Um, for, for white balance in HDR content point, they recommend low, but in, in certain dynamic range, they recommend high. Um, so warm 50, two points, and then point low. I think I messed around with this and I, I just like low better. So I agreed with them. And then red, green, blue, you can just leave that at default. Clarity, adjust sharpness at 10, super resolution off, noise reduction low, MPEG resolution low, smooth radiation low, true motion off. They don't really jump into like these details too much on their website, but uh, these if you want. So yeah, that's basically it. And for sound, it should be on AI as well. But I really, really like the image of this. Like when, let's give you a sample here. I just think this looks super, super clean. There's like no judder at all. The colors are very accurate. It's not like blown out with uh, like the vivid setting where the colors just aren't even true to life. Um, I don't really like that. So colors seem very, very accurate. It's super smooth, retains a lot of the clarity in the image. Um, and there's still a little bit punchiness to the colors that you see in these greens. Like it's not completely muted. So it's just, I don't know, I think it just looks very, very good in my opinion. So if you guys want to go copy these settings, you can. Um, so if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you for the um, recent support. As I mentioned, I'm thinking about doing a TCL, my TCL QLED 5 Series TV that I got earlier this year for, I think I got it for like around $350. Absolute steal. Um, highly recommend that TV. I think it's a 2023 model as well. Yeah, I definitely got it this year. Um, so yeah, this LG TV, it's really awesome. Ever since I adjusted these color settings, it's looked really, really solid. So shout out to Arting, shout out to, to Darian for um, sending me the link to this. Um, I'll probably put like his profile link up, up on YouTube or link his YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you liked it. Dislike if you don't like it. Um, share it with your friends if you have this TV and if you want to calibrate your settings, make it a little bit um, better, uh, objectively speaking, uh, some with some subjectivity. So yeah, uh, see you guys in the next video. Tech with Scott. Bye everyone. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching another video on my channel. If you're interested, click over here to subscribe to the channel and click over here for another amazing tech video review slash tutorial. And uh, yeah. Thanks so much for checking out the channel. Appreciate all you guys. See you in the next video.